We have a real treat for you guys tonight. We have a good friend who actually attended the collective a while back. Our friend Ross Clark, who's going to go into a little bit of information on guitar and session work. Now, if you guys have any questions in the chat online, please let me know. Uh, we'll have somebody monitoring the chat, and you guys can get all your questions answered at the end of the session. For now, welcome Ross Clark. Rossi. Hello, hello. I am uh, Rossi, as, as uh, my friend Ricky mentioned. I do have to clarify, I didn't actually attend the collective. I uh, came here and practiced after my school closed down at night, and because uh, this school late, stayed open late. So I technically attended here, but I didn't attend here. I, tend, I attended here off the clock, I guess you could say. So fond memories. All right, we're gonna dive into some session work here. Um, I have up here this track that, um, lo and behold, Ricky had sent me a while ago, last year, last spring, yeah, last spring. And uh, it's already, uh, we've actually has have it done and it's pretty much ready to go, but it's uh, came out pretty differently. So we thought it'd be kind of fun to um, do the session with this original stems that he sent me. Um, right now, just to give you an idea of what's going on here, I do usually start with some uh, templates just for you know whatever DAW I'm working in if it's Logic or Ableton, and I have them just all set up to go with all my you know return sends and my buses to to go ready to go because a lot of times I'm going to be on the road when I get head up to do session work. Someone's just going to send me the audio file and you know just a quick bounce, not even probably a good one, not even like a finished bounce. It's just going to be like an idea. You know, uh, it's very uh, it's very lucky when something comes through with like a vocal and it's done, and they just want the finishing guitar part on it because usually they can just put a plug-in in there and have it be a little guitar thing in there. So it's a, it's a good chance to kind of get on the record early, get some ideas in there that might help you get publishing, more, like as well as uh, just getting paid a flat fee for your session guitar work. Um, but yeah, we're, I didn't bring any pedals this time because I thought that really the most work I get is off the cuff and I have to get it done in a quick turnaround in a small amount of time. So a lot of times I am working out of the box and not only that, but if I'm not at home and I don't have everything set up um, and I'm on the road or, you know, just a one off or I'm traveling or something like that, I'm going to have to make the best uh, make do with what's in the box and make do with the little CPU that I've been using. The past. <laughs> We've uh, this has been a common common topic lately is about just any hack you can you, you can use to like use as little CPU as possible, which, you know. Uh, is an issue that I think we all struggle with. So I have the session set up here. I got the audio file, basically the whole arrangement, but I also had Ricky send me um, send me the track with no bass and then send me a bass only track. Um, and I do that because of just for my ears and fidelity's sake, sometimes the bass, you know, even though it's in a completely different register and everything, oftentimes the synthesizer other than the guitar can really kind of screw with my, you know, uh, hearing the whole track or hearing where I fit within the track rather than being able to kind of EQ it to my own ear and play around it and kind of do guitar work that's not, I'm not going to feel gets in the way of the bass part or the bass part doesn't get in the way of the guitar part, anything like that. So I think what we're going to start by doing here is we're going to start by, the first thing I do with tracks oftentimes, I'm going to move this little guy down here a little bit, get a little comfy. <laughs> First thing I do a lot, a lot with these tracks is get the markers, get, get the arrangement set up because um, as cool as it would be just to have the track uh, sent to me and me just basically just one take over every section and just nail it. And as often as that happens, it doesn't happen. It never happens. This is just not a real thing. Um, this kind of helps me get an idea of the layout because you can go in and listen and get an idea and lay the idea down on the track. but. A lot of times, you know, and it might sound good in the moment, but you're not hearing the whole build of it and the whole uh, theme and variation and the motives, the motivic variation, which a lot of times can be based off, for me, I find, and this is more of an electronic dance track, and I always feel like there will be one section that insinuates some sort of motive for guitar that can be repeated throughout the track earlier. So we're going to go through and listen and get these sections down. It looks like the sections are pretty lined up on the grid right now as it is, so that won't be too hard, but we'll just start from the beginning. So we got a nice little, little intro guy. Mm -hmm. 
cool bass line. Got a little build, guys. So this is basically a, a form kind of outline for the track that I'm getting here. All right. So now we're flowing here, and a lot of times, you know, it's dance music isn't, isn't broken up the same way a lot of singer-songwriter tracks are with the verse, pre-chorus, and bridge. So I like to look at it as A sections and B sections. All right. So this is kind of like, this might be considered your verse vibe. All right. It looks like we got another section coming up here. So this would be an expanded verse in my perception. It's got some more vocals added in there. A lot of syncopation that's gonna make it a little tricky to do too much crazy guitar stuff over the top. All right, we got a build here. You might consider this like a pre-chorus. And then break. All right. So this is a full in first break, which is gonna usually like give you 80% of what the next break's gonna do. This, I would almost consider a post chorus and you can get a little bit more inventive on guitar stuff in post chorus because usually the vocals are gone. We got a nice, ooh. Your nice little piano part in there. Immediately, if I was listening to this on the first go, I would hear that as like the motive I would develop off of. All right, so we're back to the break again, and this is gonna be the final break for this edit. So yeah, so basically we've got a nice little bunch of sections happening here. I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna set some markers here. Just to make it easier on my eyes to get a breakdown of each section. What I'm doing there. Let's just go through and label them. A. B. Oop. And a lot of times what the producer is going to end up, you're going to end up with a completely different thing than you thought, especially if you're getting kind of like a demo form for, for these. You're not going to get what you might think is a form. So it's best not to kind of assume anything is going to be the, uh, anything is going to be a set in stone here. So that's why I kind of go with the labeling of the A, B, C, D, and F kind of thing. Because, I mean, who knows? It could be the... This uh, D section could end up being a, you know, a pre-chorus or it could end up being an intro or whatever. So really it's about getting all the sections out just so your eye has an easier time seeing what's going on here. All right. So now let's go back and listen to that section that kind of caught me right off listening to it. I'm going to go in with an EQ guy here. Now I'm just going to loop this section here. Because it's kind of like the section with the most harmony happening. They got the piano part happening. Um, 
bass is kind of doing a pedal, which means it's not really moving in many places. The, the harmony, which are the chord, which is the chord structure, is being applied here. So let's see here if we can't figure out what we got. So we're in C sharp. Cool. So we got a, we're in C sharp now and we're hearing the implied harmony. So I'm hearing, you hear this happening? But then right here, it's going to a diff, there's almost a different harmony applied there. And since it's also so open, it's one of those things once you get an idea for where the harmony is going, where you kind of feel, you know, whether you feel like a chord change happening or not, it's cool that it's open enough because really the piano chords are just going. So you're kind of open to kind of add, if you were a bass player, man, go to town, It'd be blast. You know, and I did happen to be the bass player later on in the session, but just for the sake of, you know, this little course, we're going to say that the synth bass is sing. So I get to kind of imply some uh, chord changes. So let's get rid of that. There we go. All right. So that's going to be our little, so we're going to start out, since that's a bridge vibe, I'm going to start out just doing that first thing because the other stuff a lot of times is going to be less since there's so many things going on in a lot of these tracks, it's going to be not as uh, guitar active. So you can kind of take your take what you can get, um, and I usually go for the thing that's going to involve the most guitar right off the beginning. Um, so, just, so we're going to try to do something like kind of a pretty vibe here in the beginning. So I got some uh, I got some buses going on here. I got a little. I got a little Val, little room guy and a little Valhalla. That's going to give you our long, kind of long reverb tail that's happening. So on this part, I'm going to I'm going to be sending a little bit more to the Valhalla. Right. I also have um, a bus for parallel compression and another one with chorus on it, just because um, the chorus plugin that I really do enjoy does take up a little bit of CPU. So if I'm doing multiple guitar parts, I can always like send them and then go back. Go back and post, figure them out, so. Right. Let's put that bass back in there. Great. So let's get that little click on there just so we're good to go. Start laying down some stuff here. Okay. Right. So basically, uh, there was a little latency that was happening there, but we can deal with that. This is also a lot of times just demo. A lot of times if I'm sending something like this in its last minute session, um, if they really uh, I don't I'm not really paying attention. I'm not really I'm trying to get the ideas on there. So the person, so the artist in question can get back to me as a, whether they like it or not. If they like it as is, if they like the sound of everything, then I'll send all the stems and everything. They can go to town. Um, if 
you know, I feel like I could do a better part or if I was dealing with some latency issues or any kind of um, any kind of problems there might be, uh, whether it's happening on my end or with the track that was sent, you know, I'll just get the ideas down there so they can at least hear how great it's going to be. So I can at least kind of, you know, sell that to them that a lot of times, you know, people don't, a lot of times people might have a preconceived notion about what you're going to be doing in the session and you don't know what that is. You know, that they came to, you know, you know, that you're good at certain things. So it might involve a little bit of, um, negotiating. It might involve a little bit of, uh, uh, might involve a little bit of sales, you know, might involve a little bit of this is why I feel like this part works for this part. And uh, if you feel strongly enough that you want to go back and do it at your home setup and do it through a preamp, do it through a proper, you know, outboard gear, then you can really, you know, really go for that. But a lot of times uh, in session work, it's not letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. There's always going to be a perfect solution. There's always going to be perfect EQ or compression or, you know, whatever. And you can't let that get in the way of just doing the good thing, which is actually how most of the stuff's going to come out in the end anyway. So otherwise you're just going to sit on a bunch of stems for like forever, just in your hard drive, collecting all this cool stuff that you've done. That'll never see the light of day. So, uh, we got this happening in here. So I start kind of compensating for the right here. I start compensating for the latency. Cool. So what we're gonna do with that is I'm just gonna go in actually, and this is this is so bad. This you know, oh session guitarist doing this is ridiculous. I'm gonna quantize this. <laughs> I don't even care. Um, just because. You know, I can go back and do this. I can go back and like, you know, figure fix this, no problem. But right now I just want the idea to be there. And sometimes there's such a thing as happy mistakes that happen during this that are awesome. So let's go in again, get the proper subdivisions. That was cool, but not the vibe. So we're gonna start, take these, this loop right here. We're just gonna, we're gonna bounce that guy. And we're gonna just repeat him, loop that guy. So the idea is there and we can move on, move on to the next thing. Cause otherwise I, I have, and I will, and probably will again someday, just do this over and over again <laughs> until it gets right, until it's a perfect thing. But I've spent eight hours, you know, on this, one little guitar loop that, you know, no one's going to notice a difference. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to double that one. I'm going to do a, a little bit of a, not a crazy pan. Turn it down a little bit. I'm going to choose like another pretty line to do over it. So I've already kind of now that I've just kind of chose another kind of more ambiguous guitar part to do over that because that's basically what's happening there is it's just a freaking minor chord. It's pretty uh, pretty right down the middle. There's no kind of magic there. So I want something a little bit more ambiguous on the top. Got some tuning. Turn my tone down a little bit. Different pickup. Send a little bit of that guy to that Valhalla that I was talking about earlier. Maybe a little bit more in this case. So I'm pretty pretty cool about that. So we're going to get that here. All right, let's see here. I am going to throw a little bit of the chorus on this guy again. All right. And then
Cool. So we got these two little parts, which are basically the same thing, but um, kind of functioning as one's, sorry. We got these two parts here that are happening that each are functioning as basically the same thing, basically the same rhythm happening. But uh, I have a one that is just outlining, you know, pretty boring, pretty kind of, uh, you know, boring. Um, I think it's cool, it's just a minor chord. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that is, that is as minor as it gets, that's just straight up. Then we have this other guy that's happening up here, which is more ambiguous. That's kind of, that's not really outlining if I had a, if I had a different chord over it, it would just be a nice little major chord, nice little, nice little fun guy, sunny day. It's like, a, like everything's optimistic, but then you put a different chord over it. Ooh, it's a little melancholy, you know, uh-oh. So let's hear these parts together. I'm even gonna do this here. I'm gonna group them. And then, let's just. Cool. So I'm feeling good about that part as it is. Now I'm going to go back. And one thing I always notice about, you know, these bridges or middle eights or, uh, you know, little uh, breakdowns, whatever, whatever you have, um, oftentimes are kind of reflections of the pre-choruses or the uh, kind of area between the break. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go back and listen to um, what we have here is we have kind of this other verse slash a prime like you know another section of the beginning you know full in part and this part cool and then we have this bridge that's going to be coming up here so i'm going to go and copy this guy notes that that just saved me on coming up with another beautiful part and it has a continuity throughout the tune a lot of times coming up with a really cool awesome part for every section is just going to add to the dilemma of choice that's already there there's always going to be everything's you know you get to a point where everything sounds cool and right and good but that might not necessarily serve the song and uh a lot of times that just comes from you know comes down to picking something that you can kind of reestablished throughout the song. So I have this happening through here earlier. Um, right now, let's listen, go back and listen to that beginning. So right now, that's, that's a little early for me, I think, to be bringing in this pretty part, but, you know, a lot of times, what's happened to me in the past is that I will send something where a part is particularly striking and they end up going and cutting it up anyways. And that's not really my job to go in and cut up whatever track. That's kind of like part of the fun of being a producer is going in and cutting stuff up and, you know, putting it like synchronized, syncopating it or, or uh, having it sequenced throughout the tune. So uh, I, like, I, like, I do like to leave things open for producers to be able to go in and chop things up or, or quantize or, or move around. But as long as I have the general idea there, um, I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, I'm pretty happy about this, where that's going. And since it's only an outline of the song that we have in front of us is only an outline, really, of probably how it's going to end up. Um, that is a good start on that motive for me. So I'm going to label that guy. Bridge. Pre. All right, I'm going to put that away. All right. Now we're gonna do. Now we're gonna look, take a look back at the verses, because now that we have this uh, beautiful thing that's happening, we're gonna kind of try to add something that has a little bit more 
groove, a little bit more syncopation, something that um, adds to kind of the idiosyncrasies of the guitar within dance music, which is, you know, it's the legends. It's like Ray Parker Jr. It's, uh, you know, Nile Rodgers. It's, you know, when it comes to dance guitar, it's just that kind of funky slash. It's a, I mean, even from a mixer's standpoint, to me, a lot of it, I think of it as um, a hi-hat, really, when it comes to um, strumming stuff, which are, is one of your options that you have. It's very much just like a, you're in that area of hi-hat, syncopated hi-hat and stuff. And I mean, that's like one of my favorite parts about playing live is when I can like be in there with a hi-hat and cutting through on the hi-hat. Um, when I'm doing palm muti stuff, which is another big thing for this type of music, it is, I'm kind of treating it almost like a, like a tom, really, like a low tom, um, like a tom fill. So... Let's get a let's get a little guy on there. I'm just using um stock uh waves CLA guitar stereo. I have some other things I do, but just for the sake of time. We're gonna take some of that delay because it's we're getting funky at this part, some of that verb off. Here, bring this upper. All right. All right. So, let me get a little bit more treble action. So right now, I'm gonna loop this, I'm gonna loop this section here, this verse section. Take this guy over here. From this first section, this is where we're pretty much all in, because remember we have this area, this build. So this part is actually pretty open, and I feel like really is a good time for, you know, giving the producer, giving them the options of any kind of like single note line, palm midi, guitar, just like straight down the middle. Got a little latency there still. Um, let's see if I can go in there and mm, too much. Oh, there we go. Now, right now, that is kind of a little getting in the, I mean, I right now, I these are, the levels are kind of all over the place just because of the nature of us wanting to just get it done here real quick. But I would say that that is getting in the way too much. I'm going to move what I'm doing up to a higher octave. So basically did the same guitar line up there. Try to get a little bit more of that. All right. So let's gonna let's lay that. A little send a little bit more to the chorus bus because it's it just sounds awesome on everything. All right, so we'll take it from the ending of that. Yep. Awesome click. All right.
Right? So we had the idea basically there. And like I said, we're kind of really, we're working with a time limit here. So it's here. All right. All right, so that's sounding good right there. We're just gonna do a quick, like I said, you can always go back and redo these guitar parts over again. You know, that's never gonna be an issue. Double this here. And a lot of times, see what happened with that one, it was kind of uh, very like, tr like the transient was like popping out, but like you're not getting as much of the, uh, you're not getting as much of the actual sound of the note. So what a lot of times what I'll do is go and double that part just immediately. And uh, I'll play it on a different part of the bridge, different part of the neck with a different pickup. And already, you're already hearing a lot more of the body there. Okay. And then, so once again, I'm gonna do a little, little panning of this guy, just so it doesn't get in the way of this guy. All right. And take it from where it was. See what happens there. Looks like I flipped the beat around a little bit. So that to me is the motive. That's the motive that I love to go in and just have happen over and over again. So I'm just gonna, just gonna have that there. Once again, we're just getting the idea down. It doesn't have to be a perfect thing, otherwise it's probably never gonna happen. So let's hear that again one more time, oops. So on this one, I'm already feeling like a little bit, like it could be a little bit more syncopated with the track. So I'm gonna add a, some ghost notes in there and let this higher one um, right here, let that one kind of do the elaborating the Doing that while well, in this one I have over here. Kind of do the Ray Parker Jr. thing. I wouldn't actually do that, that's, that's what was more for me. You know, you gotta treat yourself during these sessions or else you're gonna go crazy. Um, so I'm gonna record that part now. So basically we have, whoop, so basically we do have this part that's being looped here that's allowed me to kind of get the idea down and kind of play it all the way through this one part. So we have now two options for this part and I'm gonna hear the sound panned a little bit. So right now, to me, that sounds too busy. And the idea that was in there initially 
feels like it was kind of left over. So I'm gonna go back in and hear this. I'm gonna try to come up with something that's a little bit less busy than this, but still kind of exa uh, emphasis, emphasizes the groove here. So, let's see here. Woo! All right, so I'm gonna go back here and I'm dealing with some latency issues here. Let me get rid of some of these guys here. Another reason to send to buses. Less latency. So let's group these guys. And actually, I'm going to send this to the compressor just to get a little bit more the little, little punchiness. So I'm already kind of digging that doing a basically, basically kind of a, doing a juxtaposition to the palm mute where it's still, it's still palm muty, but there's some harmony being implied over it. And it's just a, you know, in this case, when I'm doing a palm mute thing, I'm not gonna wanna get in the way with it with too much heavy harmony, otherwise it's gonna be lost within it. So I'm just gonna kind of stick to a pentatonic scale, which, you know, can't lose really. It's, you know, you got five notes to choose from. So it's a win-win. So let's try that. Let's actually try just doing a record through. Got the build up. So I'm actually kind of halfway through that. So I'm actually, I dig that, but then, uh, you know, kind of allowed myself to improvise a little bit at the end. And I actually do dig that part. So I'm gonna keep that in mind for later. It's not a hard part to keep in mind. Let's see, I think I get it this next time. Cool. Let me go back here, get rid of this guy. And a little, uh, not a, I mean, I guess you could say pro trick, but everyone can, everyone can do it. A lot of times with these funky guitar parts, I'll go in and go into the beats parameters and kind of work with the transients there. I'm gonna get rid of this last little guy. I'm gonna do the same for these up here, actually. Just adds a little, a little almost like a, you know, gay little spice to it. So I actually dig that, but maybe. Mm. So kind of going a little uh, like African guitar vibe wise, which always works on the funky stuff. So let's start this loop from here. this. Cool. So we got a loose little outline here of what's happening there. I'm going to turn the whole thing down a little bit. Take these guys off. going to pan them a little bit more just so they're not kind of in the way of everything but sending them to this chorus bus is going to help kind of as well as the glue compressor in Ableton is going to kind of right and I mean even for your sake I mean you're going to want to take this off before you send it to the uh, producer but even for the 
sake of just your own edification, a lot of times, you know, do the thing that the producer would probably do in there. Do the thing that's going to make it, you know, do the little the little tricks and stuff that they are going to do. It's going to make you kind of have a better idea of how things are going to sound in the end anyways. Um, so we got a side chain on there. So I'm digging that. We're gonna move on from there now. And we have what do we have in the next section? We have this little thing happening. Ooh. All right, so it's kind of like pumping a little bit more. You got some more vocals coming into this part. This part, uh, I'm going to go back to the thing I kind of played at the end of the last section, which is I started adding more harmony and that kind of infers more of the, you know, the mood of the song. So let's just, as long as we're in here, let's just add another, another track in here. We're gonna, um, you, know, you know, I'm gonna do a little, little switcheroo here. I'm gonna kind of choose a different texture for the guitar part here. with the towel. That's better. Now, I'm going to kind of add something to juxtapose just the dry, chorusy sound of those other guitars. And I think I'm going to do that with, let's see here, let's do, so I just updated all my stuff, so it's kind of a, let's do phaser. Got updated. <laughs> Looks good. I like that. So now we're going to be working for this section. Oh, loop that section. So I'm kind of like digging that, but right now I'm hearing it, playing it with the track is probably going to be, I'm probably going to want to play it about a half the amount I did there. Um, and I'm also kind of missing these guys that were happening. So I'm going to actually have these guys continue over here and drop out where our bridge section starts to come up. And we're going to have this guitar that's happening over here. We're basically going to replace that with this new guitar part. So it sounds like there's actually like guitar parts that are happening all the way through and each of them are switching off playing different parts. Otherwise, you know, there's no problem with having random things come into a track whenever. There's no problem with that at all. But there is something to be said for having some sort of semblance to how a live, you know, a live sample would have it played. You know, some of my favorite tracks, uh, some of my favorite electronic tracks come from samples that are 
kept in the whole track the whole time all the way through. And when another section comes in, it's just a subtraction of that or an elaboration of the track, the sample that was in there. So having it sound like it's a, almost like a real band being sampled is like something, a strength that you should play to as a musician while you're working in kind of this context. It's um, a lot of times people are used to working inside the box. I'm doing th this all inside the box because we're kind of basically working under a, um, you know, hypothetical time constraint for, for the session. But, you know, if you have the chance to do it, if you have the chance to go through your own preamp at home, do all the, um, all the guitar-y things you want to do, you know, all the slap delays, all the, you know, bus sends and stuff like that, and, and, you know, make it sound like a real sample that's being used within this music. That's also like a great, that, that for me was a huge thing in getting me kind of involved in a lot of this scene was basically coming in and having a good idea of what the idiosyncrasies were to any type of music that was being sampled. You know, it's, I know that, you know, I know that when someone hears a certain track, it's not, they're not just hearing like a guitar sample. It's not just like a plug-in. It's like that, you know, uh, it's that Nile Rogers part from uh, Soup for One, from this movie Soup for One, this for the self-titled album Soup for One, you know, no one knows about that track or cares or really should know. The song's not that tight, but <laughs> the sample's awesome. <laughs> the sample's great. Uh, so trying to do that is awesome. But also, you know, if you get into a lucky accident where you are basically um, mimicking that kind of situation, then, you know, good for you. So we're going to lay that down. Here. All right, start from right here. So that actually was a nice little Transition, we're going from this. And then we have our other tracks coming in here. So, let's hear how it sounds into our next. Great. So now we have one little area left to go here. And like I said, a lot of these, you know, might not be perfect solution here for, you know, what you hear is perfect, but the idea is getting it down and then going back and, you know, going back. And I mean, the funnest part to me about all this is definitely post when you're going to go back and kind of just plug everything into the other thing and try like a mix of, you know, their, your analog and your digital together. And then it all sounds horrible. So you delete it all and you go, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but I mean, that's kind of part of the fun of it. And really the hardest part is getting the idea, being comfortable with the idea and being comfortable with being uncomfortable with the idea when it comes out. So now we have this drop. So here I'm going to do, just call it what it is and go full do a full Nile Rodgers-y kind of take on this. Just, you know, you really can't go wrong with that. And it's been building here. We have these like kind of soft bridge, you know, pre-chorus things happening where it's all open. We have super palm beauty stuff that's happening and they're gonna, odds are they're gonna go in and completely take these and put them on different sections and, you know, cut them up. It's great. It's like a treat every time you get a track back, you never know. Um, so I'm gonna go in and give them, you know, do the, do what might be considered an obvious thing here, but kind of, Kind of hits the mark every time. So, I want to get off the top. All right. Start from right here. And once again, still, you know, kind of dealing with the latency, overcompensating for the latency. It's not that bad. I'm going to stick with the phase here sound that I had on the pre chorus because I feel like that's just a good tie in. So 
So I'm going to do two parts. We'll do this first one here. All right. All right, so latency aside. You know what, and then in this situation, I might even go in and just do it with a click. Nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> Well, in the meantime, one, like I said earlier about not letting the perfect be the enemy of the good here, I'm gonna go in and see if I can do a little nudging. All right, let's hear it now. All right, so there's a little section here. Once again, I can always go back in and go through the preamp and get the, you know, the, you know, get the latency figured out. But if I'm at a mo if I'm at a, you know, La Quinta Inn in Wyoming, odds are the, <laughs> the Wi-Fi, odds are like there's a lot of factors here that aren't going to be on my side. So, let's go to that. so I'm just going to take the best part of that, duplicate this guy, come up with another part to juxtapose it and then let's see what we'll, we'll, we'll see what we have here here and I'll even mute that part here we go all right <laughs> Something along those lines. It's for, like I said, so it's not looking that bad right now. Good enough. So we're gonna take that. Here, we're gonna. And just to hear it all together, because everything can sound, you can record everything pristinely with the best, you know, no latency, like all the things, and all of a sudden you've just done a bunch of cool sounding parts that have nothing to do with each other or the song that you're actually writing for. So it's always a thing of kind of being in the moment here and recording them as much as you can. So let's try hearing that. Two quick pan. And then... Cool. And like I said, another thing you can do, always do, that I like to do anyways, just for these funky parts, in Ableton. <laughs> Give yourself some room, whether it's a gate or you're making the transients pop more. Awesome. And then what I would even do here, just for the uh, producer's sake, cut a little part of this guy off. Because a lot of times you do want to make it so that you are, you mix it so that it kind of has what you hear it as having. Here, the sections is going, hearing things that, you know, put it, put it basically in a way that, you know, works for them. So on this one, I'm going to do...
right? So basically now we have each of our sections done. We have everything ready to go here. It's ready for the next step, basically, which is to, you know, go in. You're going to want to, you know, do all the class. You know, I'm a, I'm a guitarist by nature, and I had to learn a lot of uh, mixing and a lot of engineering kind of just by being around, like, proper engineers and, you know, being stuck in a 15-passenger van next to, like, two engineers on both sides or two producers on both sides. Just a great way to get inundated until you dig it. It's just of all these ideas. And it's still a never changing process and like oh, ever changing process for me. Um, at this point, I would go through and EQ the parts and like, once again, not letting anything stop me from uh, like not sitting on anything for too long, just getting it to sound good enough for the idea and everything. Um, you know, pop them into like do a little mixing uh, of the whole master, uh, send it to them with the ideas that I'm doing and you know, really, that would be it. I have a part for every section now. And that is to me, you know, 45 minutes into a session that I'm doing on my own without my rig run down, without my rig or anything like that. It's I'm going to be a happy guy, like, because either way, I'm going to send it to them. And if it's not going to be the vibe they want, they're going to be able to tell me right away. I'm not going to be guessing. I'm not going to be, you know, assuming that they want anything anywhere. It's like the, uh, the thoughts are there. The things that you're most likely to do are going to be the first things that you do. It's going to be your most subconscious reaction to getting a track. So you might as well call it what it is. Get it down on the on the screen, send it their way, and if they dig it, cool. If not, you can either kind of tell them what you're thinking behind it, or you know, ask them for some more, you know, clear advice, which you know you might get, you might not get. So, but at this point, like the song has started, the the all the parts are there. Um, I have all these ideas. I have a a bridge and pre-chorus idea that's beautiful, kind of ethereal, kind of takes away from this, like juxtaposes the more funky. Um, you know, palm muty or strummy parts, and they're and they're all guitar parts. They're not like covered in plugins or like bit crushers or anything. Like they're just they sound like guitar. They the producers a lot of times they'll they'll want to make it sound like a synth, which is kind of like why don't you just do it with a synth? But like it's cool, you know. It's like you know adding a a, a tap solo on a Katy Perry tune makes it. It's like rock and roll, you know. It's like a it's a guitar now. Like you can't, you don't want to put it in there where it's ambiguous in the background, just like layering and just like low, low pass and everything's chill. It's, it's a guitar. They they called you and they're gonna like give you money or, you know, publishing to do it. You want to usually sound like a guitar player on it, um, and let them do all the fun plug in these stuff over it, which is awesome. So, but that is basically how I start. That's my workflow when I'm starting sessions. That is, um, that's my jumping off point. Um, if I get the okay, I go home and go through my BAE 1073 preamp into, you know, compressor and into all, through my pedals for sure. I mean, next time, you know, next time I'd be happy to do a pedal, uh, tutorial there, but, um, right now it's the idea is about the outline. Um, and I think I get the most work done when I just go straight into the box, get the ideas down and then pull out the pedals and start getting weird. With that stuff, otherwise it's just gonna, you're putting the horse before the cart. It's just gonna take forever. You have all these awesome sounding parts, but, or awesome sounding guitar things, but not any parts, you know, the parts aren't there. So that is uh, basically in an eggshell, how I start my workflow in doing session work, so.